Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk to you all about vector shape nodes and 3D shapes inside of DaVinci Resolve 17, and which option you might want to go with when you're considering building out your fusion effects. So vector shape nodes are new to DaVinci Resolve 17, and the basic idea of them is that using one of the nodes, such as the shape ellipse node, you're able to put in parameters and generate a 2D image onto the screen of that shape that you specified. If I right click, go to add tool and shape, then you can see in the menu that there's of course other shapes here, such as ingons for when you want a polygon that has a certain number of sides, rectangles specifically for four sides and four corners, star shapes, which I showed in a previous video, and of course ellipse shapes. So when you want to generate some shapes such as circles onto the screen as we see here, you would simply take your ellipse node, expand it in the inspector, and you can see some of the parameters that you can set, such as the width and height and the offset from the center for the positioning of the ellipse. Then with these basic shapes, you can adjust them using tools like S grid, which you can see here takes the original shape, which you can see that duplicates it with three columns and three rows of the exact same shape, applying the same animation to all of them. And then when we're ready to actually churn that information into a 2D image that we can see in our video, we use the S render node to do so. So if I go to the start here and I hit play, you'll see I have a pretty simple animation nine copies of the same shape moving to one side of the screen nothing special about that so one of the advantages i want to demonstrate in this video is that by using vector shape nodes you're generating 2d images and of course you can animate them in whatever way you want to create motion graphics but when you want to create an animation and you just want this face on perspective that it doesn't need to be any digital camera work moving around in a 3d space uh, like we have with our 3D nodes, then this is going to be a superior, much faster to render way of doing things. So once again, I'll go to the start, I'll hit play. You can see it goes pretty smoothly right now. If I change any of the settings, then it's going to need to re-render everything. So let's, for instance, I'll go to the start here. I'll change the base width and height of all of these shapes to 0.15 instead of 0.2. So now that it has a different size at this shape, it's going to need to re-render everything for all of these nodes in the chain. So we hit play here and you can see it's going to go very smoothly still. I could change the number of columns here by increasing grid cells X on the grid node. Maybe I want more grid cells Y as well. And maybe I want to reduce the amount of offset between each nodes. So you can see with all of these changes, it doesn't really slow down the computer at all. When we're just working with these vector-based 2D images, because all of the changes you make to your vector shapes are going to basically be immediately rendered, it's going to be much easier to iterate through your animation and figure out exactly how you want it to look. And then if we go over to the 3D nodes, uh, we can do a comparison here. So let's see, I'll put the render 3D on the right side and maybe the merge 3D on the left. So on the merge 3D, we can actually see our full 3D scene. If I hold alt down and middle mouse wheel, I can spin around in 3D space. So really cool, we basically have the same kind of 3D scene that we would have in other programs such as Blender, except we're not doing modeling here. We're just piecing things together to create whatever uh, animations we need for a video, but we have a similar set of tools. Uh, for instance, we can see here, I have a spotlight that is pointing straight at the sphere. And you'll notice on the sphere with uh, lighting enabled on the 3D render, which you can toggle off and on, it's actually going to reflect the fact that lighting is hitting it and bouncing off of it. So on the material tab of the 3D shape, you can see that there's multiple colors here. The diffuse, which is the base color, and then specular and transmittance as well. Um, with the vector shapes, so with the vector shapes like the shape ellipse node, you can, you can see that they only have one base color. I'm not sure yet if it's possible to apply a gradient over those shapes. But when you're looking at the 3D shapes or 3D text nodes, you're actually dealing with real 3D digital objects. So that's why you have all of these settings here, as well as the ability to apply lighting and shadows in your scene as well. If you have multiple objects, you can have one object cast a shadow on another object. The problem, of course, is that by adding that extra dimension and all the complexity of lighting and shadows, that it's going to make the rendering take a lot longer. So if you have a supercomputer, it's not a problem at all. But imagine you're just trying to create a really basic 
animation. So uh, here I'll go ahead and hit play. I'm not sure if it's going to be pre-rendered or not. It looks like it's not pre-rendered. So you can see the render 3D node, it keeps flashing over and over again because it needs to render all of these frames where the sphere moves its position and then it needs to recalculate the lighting on that sphere. And although we only have one single object, it is taking a lot longer than the vector shape nodes where I even create 12 of the same object by putting it in a grid. And as we add more objects to a 3D scene, it's going to take longer and longer for that initial rendering. And although there's nothing wrong with that, there's plenty of use cases where you would need the 3D nodes. Uh, but if I change any of these settings, like the cone angle on the spotlight, for instance, now it needs to recalculate everything from the start to the finish. And this is with a really simple scene. You can see that there's just two lights in here and one sphere nothing really complicated about it at all it's just that it's a 3d scene and it's going to take a little longer to render all of this uh basic animation so then if we go back over to the vector shape nodes where we don't need 3d objects we don't need lighting we just need to create graphics on a screen that animate in 2d that is just so much easier to make changes to it for instance if i want to change the color here i could just change the color hit uh, okay and the color is green now didn't need five or ten seconds to re-render everything. So in addition to lighting for a 3D scene, we could add in a 3D camera and I'll just connect it to the merge 3D node here. I think that's where we go with that and I'll bring the camera back here. Let's put the 3D renderer on the right side and now this camera node is going to be uh, determining what actually gets rendered out. So in a sense, it replaces the default view that you would have in a 3D scene without a camera node. But this camera, we can animate it. So I'll just go ahead and keyframe all of its positions at the start of our animation. And let's use the gizmos at the end. Note that they're already keyframed, so we can change the position here. And with this, we can control how it's going to look at our scene. So if I hit play again and we render everything, you can see the camera's moving and that's also going to affect the perspective that our scene looks at the giant sphere. So for reasons like that, being able to do camera work, being able to import your 3D models and use that in a 3D scene, being able to add lighting and shadows to your scene, then 3D obviously becomes a requirement. But if all you're looking to do is to create some little motion graphics and use that in a simple 2D animation, maybe with some title text added to the fusion chain after the S render, you could just add a plus over here and and right click add a merge and then bring these two together type in your text into the text field and we bring in the media out node so let's just put that in here and show it as the final thing then with a setup like this we'll be able to create custom titles that also have 2d motion graphics in the background with relative ease and it's going to render really fast so if you don't have any need for a 3d scene because you're not changing your camera perspective or you don't want to add lighting to it you just want the vector graphics to render one color and that's it then this is going to be a much better solution for you it's just going to save you a lot of time in rendering so i hope that this video has given you guys a pretty good idea of the differences between vector shape nodes and 3d nodes and the fusion editor for davinci resolve 17 so i've been chris thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my future video content